All right, the floor is mine. Lithuania, woo, feeling pumped. How are we all doing? My name is uh, Marco Gorelli, Mano Vardas Ira Marco, and I'm here to talk to you about data frame interoperability. I work at Quantsite Labs on data frame related things like open source, uh, pandas and polars, as well as non-open source things that pay the bills like uh, consulting and training. I'm super excited to be here at PyCon Lithuania 2024. So excited that I specially learned Lithuanian, specially for this conference, from Duolingo. <laughs> I'm uh, joking, of course, there is no Lithuanian course on uh, Duolingo. But hopefully, in 2025, we will see Duolingo add Lithuanian to its catalogue. Seriously, they offer Klingon, but they don't offer Lithuanian. What's up with that? But fortunately, we all speak a subset of the English language. And that means, so long as we all stick to clear and simple English, we can all communicate with each other. And that ties nicely into the topic of today's talk, which is data frame interoperability. I'm going to start by telling you a bit about the data frame landscape. We'll then talk about the interchange protocol and how it aims to be a bit more than just two pandas. We'll then talk about how we can do much, much better. So if you maintain a data frame consuming library, this part might be particularly interesting to you. If uh, the rest is not so interesting to you, then I recommend you wake up uh, especially for that part. You'll know when to wake up because I'll introduce that part by saying, and now for something completely different. That's, that's your cue. I'll also do a bit of live coding, which will either be a train wreck or a car crash, but you seem like a friendly audience, so I'm going to do it anyway. And then finally, I can tell you a bit about what comes next, some hopes I have for the future, and uh, we can have an engaging Q&A slash awkward silence. Up to you. Right, let's get this party started. Pub quiz. Let's play a game called do they return the same result, yes or no? On the left, we've got some pandas code, and on the right, we've got some polars code. So from this side of the room, do they return the same result, yes or no? Okay, got a very enthusiastic yes. From this side of the room, do they return the same result, yes or no? Yes, okay, from this side of the room, do they return the same result, yes or no? Got a no from here. Whoa! Slow down, professor. Light years ahead of us. Uh, the, the answer, in fact, is no. Uh, pandas checks if three is in the index, and polars checks if three is in the values. So, as I wanted to demonstrate, writing data frame agnostic code is tricky. And that's where today's talk comes in handy. Let's start by talking about the data frame landscape. Uh, there's a few data frames out there. The most uh, used one at the moment is uh, pandas, but as we heard about this morning, there's also polars. We've also got uh, Dask and Modin, which uh, distribute your pandas. QDF, which runs uh, on GPU, but with a pandas-like API. Although, if uh, polars is going to have GPU support, then uh, I'd recommend using that. We've got uh, koalas, which is now included in PySpark. We've got uh, Daft, which lets you deal with uh, data frames with unusual types. And we've got Grizzlies, which uh, doesn't actually exist. I just wanted to make the list a bit longer. Uh, I'm joking, of course. It does exist, but nobody's heard about it. There's uh, so many data frames. If I ever go into a coma, uh, the first question I ask when I wake up is, how many new data frames are there? And uh, please tell me that they don't all follow the Pandas API. The way that uh, the data science landscape has typically responded to this vast array of diverse data frames has been by supporting pandas. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Why is that an issue? I think there's uh, four fundamental problems. First, for users who are not using pandas, it's not ergonomic to have to repeatedly convert to and from pandas. Second, if users are starting with data on GPU, or if they're starting with lazy data, then uh, you're breaking their workflows. That's a missed opportunity. And finally, pandas is required. Uh, finally, pandas becomes a required dependency everywhere. 
Pandas isn't a lightweight dependency, so this is a bit of an issue. Can we address any of these? Yes, but not with the data frame interchange protocol. Nonetheless, I do need to start talking about it for historical purposes. The idea behind the data frame interchange protocol is that you can write a library using data frame Y, sorry, using data frame X. Your users might, might pass in a data frame Y, and then using the data frame interchange protocol, you've got a standardized way of converting between them. Sounds lovely. Is it easy to use? Uh, yes. If you want to convert anything to pandas, you just use pandas.api.interchange.fromDataFrame. If you want to convert anything to polars, you use polars.fromDataFrame. And this is already one major annoyance I have, that although the function from data frame is standardized, there's no standardization about where this appears in the API. So we can convert in one direction in a standardized way, but there's no standardized way of round tripping. Anyway, does it work? Uh, not really. So converting to pandas after pandas 2.0.2 is pretty solid. There's a few libraries that use that, but converting from pandas, there's uh, too many bugs. And uh, I think the reason for that, there's two reasons. One is that not many people are doing it yet, and the other is that pandas maintainers aren't particularly motivated to maintain the, the data frame interchange protocol. I say this not to blame pandas maintainers, but just to say this is just the nature of volunteer-driven open source. Pandas is already integrated everywhere, so there's just not much of an incentive to pay particular attention to this. So maybe after Pandas version 3, it'll be rely re reliable enough. But at the moment, April 2024, 20, 20, I do not recommend using the interchange protocol to convert from Pandas. Converting to Pandas, not too bad. So in effect, what does it solve? Problem one, yeah, it makes things a bit more user-friendly. If we have a standardized way of converting to pandas, yeah, that's good for ergonomics, but it doesn't address the rest. Can we do better? Yes, and uh, to tell you how we can do better, I'm going to have to transition to the next part of my talk, and I'll do so in the most Pythonic way possible. And now for something completely Different. Nowells. Nowells is an extremely lightweight compatibility layer between pandas and polars. Look at how happy this uh, panda and this polar bear look uh, chilling out in the office together with their mate, the narwhal. And uh, the way you, do, you use narwhals is uh, starting with any data frame. You can wrap it in a narwhals class using narwhals.fromNative. You then use a subset of the beautiful Polars API supported by Narwhals. And finally, you call Narwhals.2Native. Well done, your code is data frame agnostic. If it started on GPU, it'll stay on GPU. If it started lazy, it'll stay lazy. And I think the best way to demonstrate this is with some live coding, which I am utterly terrified of doing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Wow. Round of applause, and I've not even started. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the best data set in the entire world, the Iris data set. Apparently, you're not a real data scientist if you've not seen this uh, data set, or maybe you've just not done enough introduction to data science courses on Udemy. Uh, this data set just contains a bunch of statistics about some flowers, and... Uh, We've got it here in three different flavors, uh, pandas, polars, and then a polars lazy one. The polars lazy one, we, we can't see the results because it's not yet uh, computed them. So here's an example of a data frame agnostic function. We first check if the data frame is uh, pandas, in which case we use pandas API. We then check if it's polars, in which case we use a polars API. And if it's anything else, we just uh, raise. And as you can see, we get the same results for pandas and polars. Now, please give a cheer to this function if you like it. <laughs> One whole entire person. I'm uh, surprised. That's more than I was expecting. Uh, to be honest, I don't really like how we're repeating the same logic uh, twice. It's kind of difficult to maintain. So let's try to do better. 
I'm gonna gonna start by copy and pasting. That's uh, the most common thing I do as a programmer. Gonna then import my friend the narwhal. Import narwhals as NW. It's the law in data science that uh, everything needs to be imported as a two-letter acronym. And then go into follow step one, which is df equals narwhals dot from native df any. I'm yeah, I've killed the pandas code. We then get rid of these is instance checks because this is meant to be a data frame agnostic. Then result, I'm going to substitute uh, polars with uh, narwhals, but it's uh, the same API, so don't need to change anything. And then going to return narwhals dot to native result. My heart rate is out of control. I am so scared about running this, but going to do it anyway. Yeah, it's just a function, as Lucas says. What's the worst that can happen? I embarrassed myself at PyCon Lithuania 2024. Yeah, worst things could happen. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's been an amazing conference, so. <laughs> right, let's check I actually ran this. Okay. Yeah, looks like it's going to work. Well, let's uh, check. Is it going to run for pandas? Okay, so for pandas we get uh, the same output as before. Are we going to get the same output for polars? All right, and then the real uh, proof in the pudding is can we get the same output for polars? Lazy. So we get a naive graph, and if we call collect, then we get yeah exactly the same results. Wow, thank you. That's very kind of you. And uh, I wish I could already do collect uh, GPU equals true, but uh, that will come. Anyway, as we saw, we can uh, take a complicated looking function with if then statements, and we can narrow it down to just writing our logic uh, once with a clean, clear, readable Polars API, and uh, it will uh, be data frame agnostic. Let's go back to the slides. I uh, did not think that was going to work, so I had some backup. Uh, slides, which we can skip over. <laughs> and uh, the most common question I receive when I talk about narwhals is, what about IBIS? So let's address the IBIS in the room. The most startling difference between narwhals and IBIS is the size. So narwhals, the package size as of April 2024 is 0.3 megabytes, whereas IBIS is more like uh, 310 megabytes. They do have plans to reduce it, but right now, April 2024, I think Narwhals is uh, more suited to writing data frame agnostic code if you don't want to blow your package size uh, out of uh, proportion. Having said that, well, let's compare the other items. So to use Narwhals, you just use a subset of the Polars API. So if you're familiar with Polars, the learning curve is practically non-existent. Whereas for IBIS, you need to learn a new API. Although, to be fair to IBIS, they did invent IBIS before Polars even existed, so they didn't have the choice about using the Polars API at the time. Then, in terms of number of backends supported, Narwhals currently supports uh, Pandas, Polars, QDF, uh, Modin, and is extensible. But uh, yeah, Narwhals already, sorry, IBIS already has 20 plus supported backends. So at the moment, uh, IBIS is winning there. IBIS is also winning on the matureness. IBIS is uh, mature and production ready, whereas Narwhals is new. Use it at your own risk. However, and this is the killer feature, and I think this is the number one most important metric by which we should judge open source projects, and that is that Narwhals has a hand-drawn cute animal picture on the readme. And uh, based on this metric alone, I hereby declare Narwhals to be the winner. In, in, in all seriousness, I think that IBIS and Narwhals have very different goals. I don't think they are competitors. Uh, I just needed to make the comparison because it's something that people ask about. So use the right tool for the right job. Having said that, Narwhals supports a subset of the Polars API. How far does that subset go? We can run the TPCH benchmarks using Narwhals, and uh, yeah, these benchmarks do group buys, joins, filtering, aggregation, selection, concatenation, uh, string methods, date time methods. 
So although Narwhals is limited to fundamentals, I think it's already extensive enough to be useful. But if you need anything obscure that would be useful in an open source project, let me know. Anything useful to open source is always in scope. Narwhals is also extensible. Now, I love open source. Everybody here loves open source, I think. But I'm not an open source absolutist. I don't think everything needs to be open source. And uh, some companies, maybe they have an open source offering and a closed source offering. And I've designed Narwhals in such a way that it's extensible. So if you have a closed source solution, you just need to follow the Narwhals uh, specification. And then Narwhals will be compatible with your library as well. Maybe I'll, uh, I, I would prefer it if you made it open source. Maybe I won't advertise your closed source library on the readme, but it is possible to do. What does Narwhals achieve? Well, if we go back to the four problems of only supporting pandas, I think Narwhals achieves all four. So first of all, Narwhals does not do any data conversion. It just translates syntax. So users don't need to convert between data frame libraries. Uh, second, if your data starts on GPU, it, computation stays on GPU. If your data starts lazy, then up, um, everything stays lazy. And uh, you're not required to have any heavy dependencies. Narwhals is about as light as it gets. So in confusion, we've touched on a lot of things today. There are many data frame libraries out there, but typically only pandas is uh, supported. We talked a bit about what some issues are with that and how the data frame interchange protocol addresses one of them. We then talked about how Narwhals lets you support multiple data frames with only a lightweight dependency which respects lazy versus eager execution. I would like to end today's talk by talking about what I hope will happen in the next year. First of all, I hope many more libraries will add native support for Polars without converting to pandas as an intermediate step. I hope that the future of data science becomes more data frame agnostic, that maybe we can write libraries such that users can bring their own data frame. And I hope that Polars becomes the go-to data frame library for new projects. Now, I've, uh, I've been told that I'm a bit of a dreamer. And there is one more thing which I hope to see happen in the next year. This is the truly emotional part of the speech. I, I know it's unlikely. M maybe these three will happen, but I have one more wish. I hope that in the next year, we will also see Duolingo finally add a Lithuanian course to its catalogue. Thank you, Vilnius. You've been absolutely wonderful. Such a kind audience. You're amazing. You're the best. Thank you so much. Now, please go out and use the Polar's API. And applause, Marco, for his comedic uh, traits as well. Woo! OK, so no questions on Discord. Do you have questions here? You can raise your hand and ask the question. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. I test Narwhals on both the nightly builds of Pandas and Polars, so against the latest commits of both packages before there's even been a new release. So Narwhals will be up to date before there's even been a new release of either Pandas and uh, Polars. And internally, I might have to do some checks on versions, like uh, for Polars greater than 0 0.20.4, I can use uh, dot list dot uh, gather, and before that, I can use dot list dot uh, take. But it should be manageable. It uh, should be backwards compatible, like from Polar's about 0 0.20 and Pandas 2 at the moment. Curious to see how far we can take it, but uh, I think because it's limited to just fundamental data frame operations which are less likely to have API changes, then I don't think it should be too much of an issue.
Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, internally, narwhals might get a little bit ugly, but as a user, you should just be able to use one uh, simple unified API, and narwhals will take care of the different versions for you. Yeah, there's the question, please. All right. <laughs> Super important question, yes, of course. <laughs> I love off-topic questions. So I encourage people to ask more of them if they like. For anyone who didn't hear, in my opinion, what uh, beverage are the animals drinking? Uh, uh, I think uh, the polar bear and the narwhal, they are uh, drinking coffee. I think so, yeah. And uh, the panda is drinking some kind of juice. Uh, kvass, I don't know. Blue juice. Bumble juice. <laughs> Oh, bamboo juice, that's it, yes, exactly, with a bamboo straw, yes. That's uh, probably right, I'll, I'll have to ask uh, my illustrator. Any other questions? Oh, it was like super great questions, we have to wrap it up. Looks like. So, once again, thank you so much, Marco, big applause to this guy. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>